exactly four days to the polls we are literally at the home stretch of this elections and there's a lot of conversations out here particularly when it comes to just trying to ensure that we maintain peace now during and even after the election this is what you said to interrogate with my guests this morning who are actually in their own defined research as much as they carry you know heavier the titles underneath their names but you're just trying to interrogate where we are as a country in terms of preparing and moving forward, how can we maintain peace in this election? I'm, elections, I'm joined by Professor Kithinji Kinyua, to my extreme right, who is a lecturer at Sofia University in Tokyo, Japan, as well as just a lecturer of matters with politics and culture in the same university. Right next to him, which is to my immediate um, right, that is uh, Dr. John Mwangi, who is a senior researcher at Glossops. Gentlemen, Karibu Sana to the program. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Before we delve deeper into the issues, let's just start from that research bit because ideally you play a big role in comes to matters research and we know that yesterday being the 3rd of August was actually the last day for pollsters to either conduct or release polls that is within our laws and there's a lot of conversations out here particularly in respect to how these polls are conducted, the sample size they use, the believability of the polls at the end of the day I mean we have had instances not just in Kenya but even beyond whereby what is on the polls might not negate what exactly turns out well so that again bridges the gap of believability. Let me start with you, Dr. Tari. What do you make of this, just given from a research perspective? Uh, first of all, thank you and thanks for that perspective. I think uh, opinion polls, uh, if they're conducted scientifically in the sense that uh, there's a particular sampling frame that is adopted, uh, a representative sort of sample because I mean you cannot sample everybody for you know logistical and other concerns yes. but they do give if they're conducted in the proper scientific way they do give a sense of what is to be expected uh, yes uh, we might talk about who was polled and, and, and how the process was polled mm -hmm. but I believe if the process you know you have a clear sampling frame, you have articulated the key issues, uh, and then of course, of course you have thought about the demographics, you know, who are you polling, is it, is it representative, uh, and so on. So it, it's, it's possible that you can get to a close approximation of the perspectives or the perceptions of a population at a particular time, uh, but also bearing in mind that you know, different dynamics also change. Uh, if you're conducting a poll very close, mm -hmm. there might be other dynamics, you know, issues are shifting, you know, and, and so on. But I would say if, if the process is, is conducted, you know, in that, in that, in that proper manner, yeah. it's very much possible to come to a closer approximation. Of course, we have to be clear that opinion polls also have a margin of error. Yes, plus one, minus yeah, one. Plus plus or minus one uh, and then also interesting if you've seen all these polls there's something around the the category that is you know it's called the undecided yes so you might be polling 40 percent or 45 percent but then you see, but there's also a category that has not sort of properly uh, made up their mind mm -hmm. so all those are sort of factors uh, that need to count when we are evaluating at this polls. Mm -hmm. But still again on that research bit before we get we get to even the peace aspect but still on that research bit and uh, I want to bring you on this one um, Dr. Tari. We are over 50 million in this country in terms of population. Just the other time I think it was um, Mizani if I'm not wrong who had a sample size of 2,000. Yesterday InfoTrack on their polls said that they used a sample size of 6,000. Just for the better understanding of Kenyans because again we also know fully well we cannot use the 53 or the 50 plus million Kenyans that we are so there's definitely have to be a sample size that has to be used but what informs this again to just ensure that Kenyans really understand that we need to believe this polls when they come or we need to be trust in these institutions at the end of the day well uh, thanks for that uh, I want to to believe that in the science of opinion polling again I'll go back to the question of representativeness mm -hmm. uh, when you have 
you know, a population of about, I mean, we, we only hear thinking about the, the, the number of registered voters ideally, yep. even though we, the population would be about 50, 52 million or so. Mm -hmm. uh, by scientific standards, uh, anything above 2,000 is, is, is a fair representation uh, of, of a population like that and then of course you have to break it down and, and I think I've, I've followed some of the debates yeah. on opinion polls so they also break them by you know, demographics, you know, by age, region. by region, sometimes they might also push you know, some, some, some bit of you know, education, mm -hmm. they may also have a bit of you know, issues that are, that are affecting the polls. So I think, and, and I think there was a commentary I saw a few days back that did not actually also show a very significant difference in terms of results, whether you had 2,000 or 6,000 okay. uh, people polling, uh, the, the, the margin of difference was very minimal. But coming back to the perspective you raise, and I'm not too familiar with the, the scientific process that I think the, 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 the one that you mentioned, but it's, I mean, I would say there's a sense in which we also have to be careful about how we read opinion polls and I think when they release the opinion polls they, they, they of course will disclose for instance the period in which you know they conducted them uh -huh. how they conducted them you know was it by you know a telephone uh, survey which is which is acceptable was it by a questionnaire and, 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 and I mean, as with all scientific processes, even though uh, my colleague here is mentioning that, yeah, we need to, tr to trust science, mm -hmm. what is important is the credibility of that process. Of course, besides how different actors might want to frame the issue, because I think we've also seen across the board that people interpret uh, opinion polls on the basis of how they seem to be favoring them. Mm -hmm. If they're favoring their it's, side, it's a good poll. It's, it's a good poll. Mm -hmm. But I think here as, as researchers, as, as social scientists, I believe we should think about how did you arrive at that decision. Mm -hmm. But also appreciate that some, I mean, individuals in, in a social science context also carry with them certain biases you know, uh, and because of that, uh, that's why we need to think about multiple other sources. And I'm glad all these opinion polls, I mean, the, the opinion polling companies and organizations have been conducting, you know, different polls. And so we can see a bit of, uh, there's not of a big variance per se. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, if you follow the trends, you could see, of course, some candidates have, have been either going up or down over time. And also given the different dynamics, I think around, uh, for instance, around May, before the, you know, the, the coalitions had announced their the running mates, the polls were a little different. Mm -hmm. uh, but when, you know, the, the, the running candidates, you know, the running mates of these, you know, coalitions mm -hmm. are now, so again, a few dynamics. Uh, have kept shaping yes oh, okay yeah. so you can agree that you know various issues tilt the mm -hmm. you know opinions in a different way depending yes but talk to what about um Glossop's dactari and its mandate what exactly it does uh thank you so at the global center for policy and strategy mm -hmm. which we abbreviate as as Glossops, mm -hmm. we are uh, a leading think tank uh, that is focused on action research, uh, both for policy influence and, and strategic formulation. Uh, we do work, uh, you know, with different experts, uh, policy experts and so on. And our business, of course, is to shape uh, you know, public policy in different aspects. We work across uh, five pillars currently. We work uh, around security and defense. Uh, we work on foreign policy. We work on transnational organized crimes, we work on development, uh, but also uh, governance and ethics. And I believe uh, this is you know, the, mo the, the, mo the point and the moment to, to think about the governance uh, around elections, mm -hmm. but also how we secure our nation. Uh, Kenya is, 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 is a regional player, it's a member of the global community, and so as elections 
come and go, we need to remain stable and so on. Mm -hmm. So we are really in the business of engaging in policy influence and, and strategy formulation mm -hmm. in pursuit of our mission, which is to engage in global peace and prosperity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so research, uh, action research remains one of our key pillars. And uh, we've done some work around elections, uh, especially thinking around how do we secure elections, how do we take best practices uh, from different contexts, and I'm happy we, we're having this conversation mm -hmm. just a few days to the polls, yes. Yeah, well yeah. said. I mean, just as you're explaining that, you talked about also, you know, as a country being a regional block, regional bases, and just the other day we saw the president launching uh, the MV Uhuru 2, you know, the shipyard there in Kisumu, and we know how important that is going to be, particularly in terms of our economy and, you know, transportation of petroleum products, oil, to particularly the East African block, and so this is why it's important for us to keep ensuring that we keep peace at all costs. It doesn't matter the circumstance, but we keep peace at all costs. Going just by what you're saying, then, in, in aspects of governance, policy, as, as being a regional base, what has been a general assessment, even as you talk about securing elections, maintaining and keeping peace? What have you come across? What have you observed? Uh, thank you. Uh, at Glossops, of course, as we work with different partners, uh, and also, you know, thinking about, you know, the general uh, context of our region, uh, sort of limiting myself to, you know, elections and peace within the region. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there are certain, you know, conversations we've had, there are certain, you know, analysis and research we've done. Mm -hmm. One is, I mean, as, as, as I had alluded earlier, the question of how do we secure this, and we have come to, uh, we recently did a piece of research that looked at how to prevent electoral violence, and mm -hmm. we were able to isolate a few things. Uh, one of the key things, and I think uh, Professor Kithinji here has mentioned, has to do also with one of the things we've observed uh, as a determinant with, you know, matters of electoral security. Mm -hmm is how the Independent and Electoral Boundaries Commission uh, conducts the whole process. So the conversations we've had, the perception surveys we've done, uh, indicates to us that how, how the body conducts this process would be very important, yeah. bearing in mind, and, and there have been important conversations around electoral integrity, yeah. uh, transparency, accountability, mm -hmm you know, conformity to the rule of law, you know, constitutionality, you know, applying, you know, the electoral processes. Because we, we have a history. Yes, we do. Uh, we have a history uh, where we come from. And so that seems to be an important concern. Mm -hmm. But also, there's this a certain... Yes, from the research, from the research we've conducted. Okay. So that is an important concern. Mm -hmm. The other observation we've made through our research is really the place of public uh, peace messaging, you know. Uh, peace is a currency, you know, and, and, and of course we can debate uh, around the question of what peace means, but I mean, peace is sort of everything we breathe, and I mean, we need to, to be in a state of calm, you know, to be in a state of social cohesion and so on. Mm -hmm. So there have been concerns, and this is also something we observe through our research, that engaging or engagement with different stakeholders, you know, around peace, you know, the value of peace, you know, and we, you know, in academic circles, uh, in peace studies, the argument is that peace is not merely the absence of war, you know, it's, it's not just, you know, that a situation is calm, but so also thinking around how do we coexist, of course, uh, from 2007 and, and previous periods, uh, in terms of our governance, uh, there are certain, you know, dynamics that come into place and impact on peace. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, we've always been talking about structural inequalities. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, you know, questions around land, questions around identity, mm -hmm. uh, questions of, you know, how do we access resources, uh, how do we make our institutions strong uh, so that we are able to... Because elections, as, as we know, are just a peaceful way to transfer power and so in terms of the credibility, but just going back to public messaging about peace, 
uh, different stakeholders, whether it's religious leaders, civil society organizations, have been very concerned. And that's something we have thought, I mean, the research has, has documented as important. Mm -hmm. Let me mention a third point, and yes. maybe just come to a conclusion here. Yeah. Uh, the other beat that we observed is the question of, of hate speech and, 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 and disinformation and misinformation. Uh, particularly on our social media spaces, uh, uh, well, you know, on political rallies, I think there's a bit of restraint, a bit of restraint now. But I think the last home, I mean, the last couple of days to the election, you might see a bit of <laughs> outburst, a story. Uh, out, outburst on the political space. But if you on the online space, there's a lot of disinformation. There's no regulation there. There is regulation, there uh, is. And, and of course, in, in our research, we've made uh, recommendations uh, with relevant bodies such as the National Cohesion and Integration Commission, the National Cyber Crimes Committee, that's been, you know, focused on, on, on monitoring uh, social media. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, so the point to be made, or the observation we made from our research, is that we need to really think more critically around how we. Uh, regulate uh, hate speech, mm -hmm. how we promote social media restraint. We have a growing, uh, a young demographic that perhaps is consuming news much more uh, from, you know, uh, from uh, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and so on. And because we cannot properly, you know, police those kind of spaces. I think is important. So those are some of the observations we've made, and we're happy to discuss more as we move on this conversation. Yes. Mm, yes, exactly. And talking about that aspect, you had also touched a bit on the hate speech, and you also touched a bit on that dactari. And looking at also what NCAC had recommended just five days ago was to lock down Facebook. We also had that particular story in the dailies today. But the ministry, ICT, said that mm -mm, we are a free state; we cannot be able to do that. But again, you talk also about social media. And there may be regulation, but we cannot quite police what goes into that space. So how does this um, recommendation sit with you, much as the ministry contravened it, but how does it sit with you? Would, that, would it have been a good um, form of recommendation, particularly during this time of election, where we know that there's a lot of information going out there? Uh, thank you. Uh, the question of <laughs> social media regulation is, is, is a tricky question across the board. Definitely, uh, I believe uh, the, the position not to you know, ban social media spaces. So you agree with the ministry? Uh, I, would, I, would, I would support that perspective because okay. it also sits with, you know, you know, with our constitution yes. of freedom of expression. But of course, uh, we also have to be cognizant uh, of the view that you know where your rights begin is there also mine and in some way I mean the question of uh, accountability of how we use these platforms and this also goes back to the point raised by my panelist here you know uh, our social values and 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 and, 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 and skill sets and so on uh, sometimes is you know, just speaking to this question of you know social media misuse, for, for lack of a better word, uh, and that glossops actually we've we really engaged with <laughs> this question. You know, thinking about how do you, you know, and you know how do you think around social media disinformation across you know the whole board, and it's not of course a Kenyan phenomenon. Mm -hmm. We saw that in the U.S. elections, right? And 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 the challenge a bit also with social media regulation. I think people, of course, need to have liberty, you know, to express themselves. Yeah. The challenge, I believe, uh, comes with regulation. Uh, I mean, we are dealing with artificial intelligence. We are dealing with automatic bots, you know, <laughs> in this space. So these are, are no humans, uh, but they, um, I mean, of course, behind them are, <laughs> are human beings yeah. engaging in this. Space. So uh, I think the point is, yes, regulation is important, the law is important, mm -hmm. but at lots of we also think that careful uh, awareness about especially the 
the eels, you know, the side effects of it, right? And, and some people actually engage in this social media sort of misuse on the basis of misinformation. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not fully aware that maybe, say, someone is sending you something on a WhatsApp group. Uh, Case in point, the video we've been seeing round. Yes, yes, yes. So somebody is sending you something, and what do you do quickly? You just send it to your next WhatsApp group, or you post it on your Twitter handle, and, and that is also what creates. And then also this, this and, 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 and my panelist here has mentioned why perhaps we don't need to talk about peace all the time. If we talk about social values and so on, someone will first have restraint, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and that also explains the fact that, and, and we've also made similar recommendations that you know, media houses are also very important mm. actors in this space. But also now the, we have a, a good number of fact-checking organizations. So opening that wide analysis, and at Glossop we sort of, you know, engaged in these conversations in webinars in the past, mm -hmm. I think like a last, I think a year ago, we had a webinar that we were just looking at social media, disinformation, mm -hmm. because we think it's, it's, it's sort of, I mean, it's, it's an important question to think about. So fact-checking organizations, creating awareness that information you post out there uh, can be detrimental, mm -hmm. you know, to, to, to the general well-being. And, and you know, at this time, it's, it's not that, I think we are over-obsessed with elections, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but also going beyond this over-obsession, over uh, awareness, and I mean, different bodies, if it is the Communications Authority of Kenya, if it is the Ministry of ICT, uh, the National Cohesion and Integration Commission, they have, you know, engaged with all these questions. But I think it all comes down to because there are things really you cannot police. Yeah. Public awareness, let's have conversations around disinformation, you know, the deliberate, of course, the deliberate mani manipulation of information. Uh, regulation is important, but let's, let's create awareness so that, you know, if you see a video, uh, don't be quick to post it. Try and first verify it. And I think media organizations have a role to play in creating that literacy and awareness, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you. Well said. And that has been Dr. John Mwangi, who is a senior researcher at Glossips and obviously focus on a peaceful election has formed the center of our conversation. Thank you so much for watching. Good place to end. Good morning, Kenya. Till next week. Have a beautiful morning.